was so stupid. Perfect. Okay, today we are going to go over my favorite band, resistant band exercises for making sharper, crisper strikes, um, stronger core, better shoulders, better physique. Uh, <laughs> not that I know about that. Yeah, let's just jump right into it. Cool. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start with the upper body. What I usually do is I'll take a skinnier band, I'll put it about shoulder height. You take this end here, you go a circle, and you go through the circle like that. Over to here, we're going to be working on just across right now. So I'm gonna get my stance here, hands up. I'm going to push, rotate, make sure I'm leading with these two knuckles here. And you kind of have to fidget around a little bit, make sure you get used to it. I'm working on pushing off the foot, moving this hip forwards, driving with this shoulder and pulling the opposite side back while keeping my eyes forwards. And you can do this with any punch. So if I want to switch feet, I could do this with a jab. I could do this with a hook punch, except now I'm gonna have to turn my body this way. I can do the same thing with the other arm. Hook punch, hook punch. So pretty much any punch. Um, if I want to go uppercut, you would have to So if I want to go uppercut, I'd have to lower a pretty decent amount, get it into a comfortable position, and then work on my uppercuts from there. Yeah, so I keep I like to keep it on the outside of my arm, keeps my elbow in, where if I keep it like this, uh, it pulls your hand back, it feels a little more stable. If you throw the old school karate style punches that come from the hip, you can pull it here and work on turning and rotating here. You can also work on the opposite. You can work on a kime, which is me pulling in here. A lot of these traditional styles come from here. You switch like this. So it's not only a movement here, it's also a movement here. So this is one of those things where if you practice with certain moves that I'm not teaching right now, you can develop a way to practice that move with the resistance band and gain that extra muscle um, tension as you throw these strikes. So this can be useful in a lot of different scenarios. So you can switch up your stances a lot. So I can have my Muay Thai stance here. I can have my boxing stance where I'm a little more open or a little more um, angled off. I can have my karate where I'm here. Really, you have a lot of different options on how you can do all of this. So it's all up to you to decide how you're gonna use this resistance band. I'm giving you some examples and then you mold it to your own preference. So just keep in mind that whatever angle I'm punching at, if I'm punching to the head, this should probably stay at the head the whole time. If I'm punching to the body, I should lower it so by the time I throw this punch, it's at the same angle, okay? And again, I try and keep it over top of my elbow on both of these. That being said, let's move down a little bit so I can also throw elbows here. I usually put it about halfway down my forearm. Maybe I'm in my Muay Thai stance. Here I go elbows, I go elbows. You have to be careful with these. Uh, don't go too fast. Because if I go too fast, what happens here is I can pull this too far. I can hit myself in the face with a resistance band. That sucks. If you record it, send me that. That'd be really funny. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it's about halfway down. And I'm pushing. And I want these movements to look exactly like I would have them if I didn't have the resistance bands here. Perfect. I usually find the resistance bands to be a little more dynamic regarding your legs, um, just because you can do so much with them. For example, I can start off a front kick here, pulling. I can treat this as a knee and going step in and just using the knee. I can work on my hip strength or my leg strength. So I can be here and just going flex, back, flex, back, working these top muscles, these quads here. Or I can go hips and go out, 
in, out, in. Same thing, hips, keeping my legs straight and I can go push here. And now I'm working a little bit of this muscle on top to keep it still, but then also my hips here to push forwards. Now you can also work muscles on the back of the leg here and work on pulling, especially if you throw a back kick, right? Back kicks have all of these muscles here that are in line. Now I wouldn't throw a back kick with this or else this is gonna just fire right up there. But what I would do is work on using these muscles in the back of the leg, pushing so far that it's not gonna worry about snapping back into your nether regions. So we're here, push, push, push. So we've got our hips pushing, opening up. This is gonna use those muscles that are gonna make our kicks higher, right? By pushing here, I'm also working on stability of this leg too. So I can hold on here or I can not and work on balance and stability in your base leg too. Over and up, oh Jesus. So I can also work on stability of this base leg, taking this leg and going push, push. And you'll feel it here on the outside of your leg. So if you're looking to use this for specific kicks, for my front kick, I'm going to be pulling my knee up for my roundhouse kick. I'm probably going to already start pivoting and pull my knee up sideways like this. Okay, because I don't necessarily, I can go turn, pull that knee up. It's gonna be a little more difficult. So what I like to do for my roundhouse kicks is don't worry about the pivot and the torque, just worry about the specific muscles. So I'm gonna be here, here, then I can be closer, and go extend, 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 or be further away and work on the hips and going chamber, chamber, chain. For my side kick, I'll put it in front of my body. Same concept, I can go chamber, chamber, or I can come closer and go extend. Um, to make your hook kicks a little bit stronger, you can work on those hamstrings. And same concept we talked about here, except now I'm going to pull up like this. So here, and then pulling back, keeping this part still and bending your knee to pull back. I can also go ahead and use this to strengthen the inside of my leg here and pull in. Uh, you think a lot of the times about these, uh, these sweeps in karate, right? I want to take my leg and pull it in and work on this inside groin strength here. So I'll go in, back. This is one of those things where you don't only want to work on, let me make sure this camera angle's right. Okay, so I'm good. So yeah, you want to make sure not only am I strengthening the outside, but also the inside of my leg. These muscles that come in. So I've got the sweeps, but I also have, if I kick, I don't want to just leave it there. I want to be able to pull it back really quick as well so that it doesn't get caught. So it's just as important as these are, so are these. And yeah, so those are the band workouts that I use to make my kicks, my punches, my elbows, my knees, everything along those lines stronger. You can use it for balance. You can use it for, wow, I'm out of breath. I think I've been talking too fast this whole time. So yeah, those are the resistance band workouts that I use. Um, you can use them for your punches, your kicks, your elbows, your knees. You can use it for balance. You can use it for core strength, hip strength, everything along those lines. Use resistance bands. It keeps those muscles lighted up longer. Lit, lighted up? Lit up. Keeps those muscles lit up longer, adds more resistance. When you finish and you throw those punches without the resistance bands, you can feel the difference for sure. Okay, go try it. Also, now there's plenty of other workouts and exercises that are just muscle-based that you can do. I, today I just wanted to cover everything that would help you with your kicks or your punches, your strikes, whatever it may be. I think it can be super useful to use this resistant bands. I recommend it entirely. I think that a lot of people don't practice the explosive movements enough and then let alone the explosive movements with the resistance band too. And then start to use this along with your training. Don't just use your body itself. You have these other tools you can use. Make sure you use them. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, comment, um, share it, follow me on Instagram, send me your social security number, um, give me your dog's first name, what street were you born on, uh, find the three squares that have traffic lights in them, prove to me you're not a robot, and everything else. Or I'll kick you. Oh yeah, almost forgot. I'm going to start posting uh, your videos. So what's going to happen is if you guys send me videos 
of you doing a technique. So what is gonna happen is if you send me videos of you doing techniques or something you struggle with or something you think is good, what I'll do is I'll break it down on my end and I'll try and help and critique if you wanna be posted on YouTube and everything like that or Instagram or wherever I'm gonna post it, probably just YouTube. Might be Instagram too. Anyway, send them to my Instagram, Sensei underscore Seth. And what I'll do from there is I'll try and edit all of it together and break it down and make it as helpful for you as possible. And maybe you don't want to send it in, but somebody else does send it in and it's something that you can use help with. I feel like it's a cool thing to do. It's a good way to give back. And yeah, cool. Send me them.